Hello, friends and patrons. <laughs> Happy New Year. Uh, I've been wanting to do a little video update. Oops. Oh my god. I've been wanting to do a little video update like this for a while. I filmed one a while ago, but then I got really awkward about it and deleted everything. Um, yeah, just to kind of fill you in on what I've been doing um, video game-wise, because basically last year, when I wasn't making music videos, for people I was working on one of two games okay I got two games in the works first one is this little frog game which you all probably if you've been following my patron posts um, you might be familiar with this <clears throat> the whole idea behind this was I wanted to make just like a simple little mobile game that you know anyone with a smartphone could play um, something that you know not anything super complex or or difficult just kind of a leisurely frogs drifting through the river collecting flies as it goes avoiding things here's the thing though i have no desire to keep working on this game i have no motivation to do anything with this um i'm at the point where like all the gameplay is in place and I'm realizing that like the way I went about doing pretty much everything was pr oh, just just not great. It's a very clunky game. Like it runs even a little slowly, just like on my computer and on my d the, the big the big problem with developing for mobile is you're dealing with like dozens of different devices with different screen resolutions, different uh, processing powers, like wildly different uh, range of of um specs and whatnot and because this is a 3d game and it actually uses blender's built-in physics engine and it uses like my whole idea was to have these kind of like custom shaders for the background that would evolve over the course of uh, a playthrough but that's all like <laughs> it's not very com like efficient in terms of processing power so when i would play this on like my phone even like in, in this in this bare bones state it was pretty uh pretty clunky and once i start adding like art assets and music and and doing fancy stuff with it it's gonna start um just being even even more bogged down so if i really wanted to make this a good game i feel like i would have to like rewrite a lot of the code from the ground up which is uh not something i want to do and also if i put like all of my creative and technical abilities into completing this game if i made like the music sound as good as it possibly could if the artwork looked as good as it possibly could if the coding was like tight and 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 um <laughs> just good if the coding was good and efficient the best version of this game i think would still be a pretty like whatever kind of game like it's not gonna blow anyone away and and it's, it's not gonna say anything about i don't know and yeah you can tell like there's so many little glitches and stuff that i would need to address and again when you when you start building it for multiple androids different kinds of ipo ipods and ipads and iphones um so i'm sad to say I'm gonna I'm gonna just drop it. I'm giving up on this. I'm giving up on this frog game. I'm sorry if that's a disappointment to anyone, which I don't I don't think it is. Um, <laughs> but you know, I did learn a lot. I learned a lot from this that I'm gonna take over into the second video game that I've been uh, working on, kind of. All right, so. At some point in the last, since the pandemic, um, I got back into the early, early Resident Evil games, like the, the ones with the uh, fixed camera views and tank controls, like the early, late 90s, early 2000s stuff. Because um, I, when I was in high school, I would play that with a group of friends and like every Friday, and we would just like have a blast solving puzzles, running from zombies. Um, love those early survival horror games. Uh, they, I, the whole survival horror genre, I felt, took a big dip in, like, the mid-2000s, late 2000s, when it became all about, like, action shooters and that kind of thing. Anyways, where am I going with this? 
I'm making a horror game, is what I'm saying. Making it with my partner Juno, who's going to be helping a lot with like the story and designs and, and all that stuff. I'm basing it off of... Um, so, <laughs> this is a long-winded. So when the pandemic started, I started having dreams about my old middle school slash just school, grade two to eight school, um, Lakewood Elementary um, in Kenora, Ontario. It doesn't exist anymore. I mean, the building's still there. It has a bunch of different uses now. But um, anyway, so I've been having just dreams and like a, a dream version of that that's constantly shifting, you know. The, the layout is always changing. It's taking you to strange places, but it's all very grounded in this uh, in this building. So I'm like, okay, cool. I want to make a 3D. <laughs> I want to make a survival horror game. So that's something I've been slowly putting together. And um, so I'll show you where I'm at. Basically, I've got mm, much of the school designed, laid out, and I have modeled it after. Pretty much exactly after um, the school I went to, and in fact, during uh, the summer of this summer, actually, we uh, made our way back to Kenora, and we were able to actually get into the building and wander around a bit. Um, they were very nice to let us in, and we were just like, or I was just like, yeah, well, I used to go to school here. Would love to just like stroll around, <laughs> um, and they let us, so that was cool. Um, so we were able to take pictures, I remember the kind of layout, and I'll show you what it looks like so far. So here's what I ended up designing. Um, as you can see, it's a fixed camera, it tracks the player around. You can use the this to uh, pan the camera, which you can't do in those early Resident Evil games. And when you switch locations, instead of like fast cutting to the next uh, camera, it actually... Um, travels to the next location. So when Juno and I started talking about this game, we had a big discussion about uh, whether to do the, you know, fixed third person camera system, which I um, was leaning towards at the time. More on that later. Um, like this, or, or do something that's a little bit more um, modern and just like like a camera that follows the player or like a first person system i really wanted to do this for a number of reasons um both thematically and uh just aesthetically um and the system i built is pretty cool because like you got these different bounds that you walk into right these boundaries so when the player walks into this First of all, it reads what boundary she came from, which is important because there's different cameras depending on um, where you're coming from or where you're going to. Because otherwise, if you enter the hall from one end and the cameras that it's panning to goes to go, is on like the other end of the hall, it will like whiplash over there, and that's no good. So there's a lot of problems with using this kind of camera system. It makes movement a little bit um, unnatural because it's constantly changing perspectives. And like when it does that, it just like translating from what's going on the controller to like what's going on the screen from shot to shot is a little janky. I don't think we're going to use this system going forward. In fact, I know we're not. We're gonna we're gonna go with a, a first person <laughs> setup. We're gonna go. Just like first person, um, it's so much easier for a number of reasons. You can put so much, you can focus a lot more on like the art style, I think. Um, oh my god, what am I saying? Um, I didn't want to do that at first because I think that, um, I don't know, first person perspectives in games, like especially for indie developers, I feel like are kind of just like the default thing to do in a lot of cases, especially for like horror games or something it just feels like it's it's um less of a design challenge for me but that's fine because i don't know what i'm doing and if i use a first person system we'll be able to spend a lot more time on like cool things 
and a lot less time on like working out the bugs of this especially once you get monsters in the picture and they're chasing you around and stuff um i don't know <laughs> well i hope this was enlightening i feel like i lost my train of thought a hundred times um so this won't at all look like what the game ends up looking like but it's a start i have the school laid out which is fantastic because um that's a big big part of it big heart big <clears throat> anyways happy new year this is a disaster <laughs> thank you for watching uh thank you for your support and um yeah i'll, I'll uh, talk to you see, see you all later